Hi, my name's Rich. Welcome to this Movement Basics series where we'll be looking at the importance of a good lunge. In this video, we'll look at how to execute a good lunge and we'll look at why recapping the fundamentals is so important to maximizing your performance. So the first thing we need to look at when we're learning to maximize our lunge is we don't just step to the shuttle. We need to learn to project forwards and push. When lunging, it's important that people make use of what we call the non-racket leg, the leg on the opposite side to our racket. Far too often, people will step and they'll not make use of this leg to project forwards and cover distance. So we're looking to load this leg like a spring, load and explode and look, my left leg, my non-racket leg, finishes close to the second shuttle where if I'd only stepped and reached, that's where my racket leg lands. So we need to learn to load and explode. Okay, so let's look at an example. Most players, especially beginners, will hold a position in the middle of the court so they feel they can reach shots at the net. But if we maximize our ability to push off this non-racket leg, we load the leg like a spring. We can hold a deeper base. This allows us to still cover the forecourt, but position ourselves closer to the rear court for attacking opportunities, for example. So hopefully I can still reach the forecourt by using my non-racket leg. And this proves that I can still cover this distance moving forwards, which means going back into the round the head corner or turning up into the rear forehand corner gives me more tactical options. So if we're playing singles badminton, here's one example to prove that I can hold my base deeper in the court. We can use this yellow line as a reference point. Can I get to the forecourt but still maybe practice getting up to the shuttle in the rear court? In this second example, for doubles badminton, on half court where we hold a deeper base to give ourselves time to react, to defend smashes, if we have a good lunge we can still get into the net to retrieve these surprise drop shots. Again using the non-racket leg to cover distance and push in. So the second part of a good lunge after having moved forwards and covered distance is our ability to land safely. The usual points apply that we should land on the heel of the foot. This acts as a break, but we need the strength to be able to land in a high position, a middle position and a low position. So we can push and we can experiment with stable landings. We can push in high, we can push in at a medium level and we can push in for those low shots. It all takes strength, and strength is something we can train away from the court, perhaps in a gym setting, so we can handle these landings at deeper and deeper positions. One of the easiest ways we can practice our ability to push with our non-racket leg and our ability to land at the same time is the simple shuttle run. We can set up some shuttles and we can have a point from A to B where we want to move the shuttle to and if we practice putting the shuttle down with the cork pointing up, that's a good indication that we've landed with balance and we could probably hit an accurate shot if we land in that way. So hopefully it looks something like this.
So hopefully after this video, you'll understand how to execute a good lunge. This will maximize your ability to move forward and holding a deeper base will increase your tactical options in the rear court. Good luck trying it.